Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 75. 75. Freddie Hamilton. Okay. And you're taken. Oh. <laughs> you're taken. You're taken. Yeah, you got a little more twang. Sorry. I think, yeah, there you go. Whatever happened to him, huh? Uh, yeah, don't know. Anyway, we'll be talking about the uh, Sharks for this week. Um, they went on a uh, pretty good tear in terms of getting their points back up. So uh, pretty happy about the week uh, in all. And then we'll be talking a little bit about some of the things that may have happened there, uh, specifically with Logan Couture, but among yep. other topics. Uh, Hurdle going to the All-Star game, mm-hmm. uh, the week ahead, and fantasy hockey. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. Well, for a week that saw Joe Pavelski return to SAP Center, I think it only fitting to have one more Captain America Eagle flyby. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we will get to that game in uh, just a bit here. But uh, for the first game of the week, again, playing against St. Louis in St. Louis, uh, this was a game that I thought they played okay, not great. Uh, there was a point where it could have been 4-1. to one. Goal got overturned. Uh, ends up the game finishing off as a 3-2 to two loss uh, to the St. Louis Blues. Uh, there was a, a couple nice plays in there, right? You had uh, Timo with a nice snipe. Uh, you had Eric Carlson had a kind of a fluky goal. Uh, puck hits uh, a skate, and uh, it's, uh, I think it was O'Reilly tried to get it with the blade of a stick, I, I and think barely went in. Bennington <laughs> basically kicked it in, you yeah. know. I mean, hey, you know, right place, right time. Uh, just get the puck on net. They always say that. Just put the puck on the net, right? So, um, all in all, not a great game by the San Jose Sharks, but it could have been a lot worse. Could have been worse. Uh, I mean, it was pretty bad with Logan Couture going out and getting mm-hmm. hurt, breaking his ankle, which we found out later. Uh, but it was also the very end of their road trip. I think it was a five-game road trip or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were kind of tired. I'm not giving them excuses. Just it's a tough game, and they it was coming off of their loss to Washington yeah. or the overtime loss to Washington. So um, it was it was tough to take. But uh, St. Louis is a very good team still. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're the Stanley Cup champion, returning champions, current champions. I guess still defending, defending champions. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, <laughs> So they're a good team, but um, uh, the Sharks hung in there and, and almost came back in the end, but did not. So no points for that game. Yeah, that's uh, that's too bad. Aaron Dell actually did play quite well in this game as well. Um, you know, a couple defensive breakdowns and uh, ends up in the back of the net. A couple gaffes, I think. Uh, Mario Ferraro might have been on the ice for two of them. I'm not really sure. I have to take a look mm-hmm. at the game. Definitely one of them. It was a two-on-two. And a uh, guy crosses over, and I think... Him and Shimmick. Yeah, yeah. Shimmick followed the trailer. Ferraro went towards the wall to try to pinch him, and when he cut back inside, there was basically just nobody there. Yeah. So he had a lane straight to the net. Again, could Dell have stopped that? Maybe yes, but, you know, those are... It's tough when you give a guy a lane straight to the middle yeah. of the net like that. You don't expect the save, right? Yeah. So... Again, Dell, I thought, played pretty well in that game uh, despite the uh, 3-2 uh, final there. And again, that, that other goal, if the guy wasn't just a, a foot off sides, um, that could have been a, a fourth goal there. So uh, it could have been worse. It doesn't matter really because Sharks pick up no points in that game. So uh, it's just an unfortunate thing. And of course, the most unfortunate thing, losing your captain, uh, broken ankle, I believe, was what they, it was a fractured, yeah, fractured ankle. fractured ankle. Yeah, and it wasn't the same one, correct? This is the correct. other ankle. Yeah. Okay, and I think we have a clip here. We do. Here's Logan Couture talking about the injury. Uh, this was actually, I think, before the Dallas game, or maybe the Columbus game. Uh, but he spoke with the media about his injury and if it was the same ankle because he had a similar injury a couple years ago. Here it is. You pretty much know right away, Logan, uh, simple as uh, pretty wrong. Yeah, I think it's just the way I felt. I mean, when I first went in, I, I thought it was my knee, just my kneecap, and then um, got off the ice, got my skates off, and tried to put weight on my on my ankle, and I couldn't. So I figured something was wrong. Um, you know, didn't find out for sure until the MRI yesterday. Mm-hmm. Is this similar to 2015? No, was, no, no, completely different spot. Okay, not as serious then. Like the last one, you need screws and stuff, right? This one is just well. This one's no surgery, right? So yeah. I don't know about level of seriousness. I think anytime you break bones and in your foot or ankle, uh, it's pretty serious. So um, this one's different. I got a hard cast on, as you see, and right. last time I didn't. So um, yeah your level of disappointment just with yeah it's high I mean very high uh, especially because we're playing better and um, you know we're playing more of a style of hockey that can win games and uh, it's gonna be tough to watch but uh, I've got confidence in the guys that they're gonna go out there and continue to play this way and, and win some hockey games 
uh, six weeks out, that's terrible news for Logan. And that's, you know, it's not even for sure. Like you said, yeah. he's never had that injury before, so he doesn't know if he's going to come back early or if it's going to take longer. It's just kind of a wait and see. And it's one of those ones where you just put a cast on and it heals itself over time. Yeah. So he's too bad he's not, you know, Logan, Wolverine Logan. <laughs> No, I mean, you said terrible news for Logan, I agree, and it's terrible news for the Sharks as a, as a team, and it's really terrible news for Doug Wilson as a GM, because, and, and Aaron had kind of just said this, was, you know, six weeks out, I mean, what happens in six weeks, right? You just you just said it. The trade deadline. Trade deadline, yeah. so gosh, that's got to be a really tough decision making if the team's kind of on the cusp. Mm -hmm. When Logan comes back, is he going to help, you know, get the team back to where they need to be, or is he going to have to kind of battle through a little bit, right? So... Oh, man, I do not envy Doug Wilson on this no, one. Not at Jeez. All. I mean, we kind of talked about this on the live, or I brought it up saying, you know, maybe the Sharks needed, not needed an injury or something, but they needed something to rally around. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we saw in the last two games, after the, the two games after the injury, uh, the Sharks won both games against teams that are pretty good teams. Yeah. So it's not like the Sharks can't do it. Uh, it's just a matter of if they can sustain it or not for six weeks. It's a long time. Yeah. Fortunately, there's a big break. There's a nine day break between. You know, during the All Star break, so um, it's not six weeks of games; it's about five weeks of games. Yeah, yeah. Probably the most important thing about that All Star break is that you aren't playing games with your captain right. uh, out during that stretch. Um, but you know, I, I thought about this a little bit, and and as soon as it happened, you know, Aaron and I have like a doc that we write our notes in, and the first thing that I wrote after that is, is a question. I hadn't I hadn't really had the answer to that question yet, but I thought to myself, is this a deal breaker? for me thinking that the Sharks will be a playoff team because last week, of course, if you watched the show, I had said that they will be a playoff team. Not should be, not could be, will be. I still kind of felt that they were they were uh, gonna be on pace to do that, that they had the firepower to do that. And you know, with the captain going down, and not just the captain, he's like your number one center, uh, on a team that doesn't have the forward depth that they used to have, uh, losing him is just you know could be devastating. So uh, I really had to think long and hard about that. Is it is, are they still a playoff team? Is this a deal breaker? And uh, you know, luckily again, we do this show once every week, <laughs> and so you get to see the highs and the lows. This was a low, and you start thinking, oh man, is it all over? And then you get the rest of the week, and that's how we do this show. You see kind of that blend of all three games as opposed to just that low of that one game, and it kind of brings you back um, you know, to, to your center, if you will. So uh, speaking about those other games, let's progress, and then maybe we'll kind of revisit that question sure. if we still think they're a playoff team or not. So moving on, uh, we play against Columbus. the Columbus Again. Blue Jackets. It's funny, it's Columbus. We beat the Columbus Blue Jackets in regulation. Yeah. The only team to do that in the NHL for, I think, Columbus's last, I think it was 14, 15, or 16 games, they have two regulation losses of both of them to San Jose Sharks. So for some reason, the Sharks have their number mm -hmm. for, you know, good for the Sharks. They get the four points in the standings for it. If uh, I could interject real quick, I think it might be because they no longer have Bobrovsky. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis is playing, though, and yeah, he yeah. did <laughs> shut out the Vegas Knights. How many jokes, you know, writes yeah. themselves, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. Anyway. Uh, Sharks played very nice. well against Columbus, and Aaron Dell particularly played very well yeah. in this game. Uh, the power play is starting to pick up now. The power play was kind of a dud uh, the entire month of December. Right. I believe it dropped from, I don't know, it was, I don't even remember how high it got at one point, but uh, we were sitting at 27th or 28th, I think, over on the league. So a couple power play goals in this game, right? Mm. Well, at least the one. I know Jumbo's was a power play goal for sure. Yeah. Um, Really, it's it's funny because you've got Goodrow basically screening, and mm -hmm. I think we have uh, we have a, a quote from Bugner uh, where yeah. where you know he's basically talking about you know yeah jumbo shooting, and then there's you know Goodrow's um, is standing in the way, and that's kind of why it goes in, right? Um, so anyway, um, there there was just I know another good good uh, shot by Jumbo there. Uh, you know he's been told like you said his entire career you should shoot more, and uh, he finally does, and the puck mm -hmm. goes in. Right, so um, you know, good on him. Good on him for doing that. And I think that there was a stat thrown out there uh, in the last like eight or nine games. He's had two goals and five assists. Jumbo's really heating up right now. Every goal that Jumbo scores from here out, out, he's gonna act like this is the last goal he scores in the <laughs> NHL. This is his last year. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, he's just gonna go all out. So it's great. It's nice. Good for him. Anyway, we have a clip about yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Go ahead. Fire away. Let's play the clip. <laughs> Well, we all did. I think that we knew that, uh, um, you know, we hit rock bottom in that position. And uh, um, you can see that we changed personnel, changed units around. 
and uh, um, you know, and, and started clicking. And I think the, the biggest difference is, is you know, we're not holding on to pucks on the power play. We're making uh, other teams adjust because we're making, we're having good puck movement. And I believe that we're uh, our shooting mentality is a lot better. And I think on that goal, great shot by Jumble, but I think you could see where good he was, and it was in the goalie's eyes. And the last few power play goals, they're all the same. We team all the other night in St. Louis. Uh, you know, Goody's doing a real good job of sitting on the lap of that goalie, and uh, um, so it's nice to it's nice to have options. I mean, uh, um, you know, that line, that that unit has been excellent for us. Always good to hear from the boogeyman. <laughs> uh, he does good post game interviews. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there were some goals from LeBanc, Jumbo, and Burns in this game, and it was enough for the win. So it was great. And you know what's funny is during our live, we had questions about who needs to step up in Kachira's absence. What were a couple of names we were throwing around there? Uh, I think the two are Timo and LeBanc. Yeah, and then uh, I think we said Burns needs to step up a yep. little bit more, right, from the from the blue line. His production's been a little bit low. So this game, seeing production from guys that we've been <laughs> asking to step up and from a guy that doesn't yeah. normally score. Uh, Jumbo's another one, actually, yeah. that we called out, I think, two weeks ago. Sure. And I think he listened because he's on a two-week tear now. I do remember you saying we love you, buddy, uh, right. about three times before. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I swear he's watching the show. <laughs> Hi, Jumbo. Somehow I doubt that, but uh, perhaps I don't know. Uh, so uh, what else? What else about the the Columbus game here? I think Dell played really well in this one too, right? We he said did. okay, fantastic so, saves. Yeah. He's been looking good. He's a solid week. He had yeah. a very good solid week. And he played all three games this week. He did, which is interesting. I thought they would have switched to Jones after a loss, which they lost in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, but but Dell looked fantastic, so they stuck with him. Yeah. So Dell is a starter from now on, I guess. We had that in the lab as well. <laughs> is is Dell the starter now? Is uh, is he the number one? Uh, what's up with Jones? Blah blah blah. You know, I think it's great because they had talked about this before, saying uh, Bugner saying, "I think this is an advantage for us, right? I think it's an advantage that we can take our our guy in Jones and give him more time with it, getting to Bokov." Uh, give him the opportunity to go over the things that he needs to work on without having to worry about jumping in and playing a game. You've got Dell right now uh, playing, you know, he's hot right now. He's he's uh, playing really well. Even in the loss, he looked really good. In the wins this week, he played phenomenally. We'll get to the next game where he just went lights out. Uh, and, you know, he, it, it's great when you have two goaltenders that that can play fairly well. It's right now, Right now, Jones isn't that guy. Mm -hmm. And you've got someone else stepping into his place to be that guy, and he's playing pretty, pretty well. It's much, much like on the blue line, when you've got Eric Carlson playing really well, Burns maybe can slump a little bit. When Burns is playing really well, Eric Carlson can slump a little bit, and either way, you've got pretty good, strong, potent offense coming from the blue line. So it's it's kind of a nice thing to have, a nice problem to have. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of shots came from the outside on the last game. So uh, less high danger chances. No surprise there. Mm -hmm. You get a better result from your goaltending. So... Yeah. yeah, and 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 the one goal that did go in in that game, yeah. it came from a high danger chance, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, it comes down to again when they kept it to the outside, Dell stopped everything, right? When when the when it wasn't a high danger shot, he stopped everything. Say most NHL goalies should exactly. But yeah, but then then you've got that one chance that gets high danger uh, against him as the one that goes in. I'm sure he stopped a lot of other ones that were in close, mm -hmm. but it was just that one that went in. So, again, you keep the puck to the outside the majority of the game, you're probably going to see a lot more games where you keep it to two or fewer, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, again, really great game by Aaron Dell. And then after the Columbus game, we move on. I believe it was the Saturday game, yeah? Yeah, the Dallas game. There you go. Uh, the return of Joe Pavelski. Yes. Should we put another eagle screech No, in I think we're, we're good on eagle <laughs> screeches. We've hit our quota for one the episode. Right. Yeah. So it was a nice tribute to Pavs at yeah. the beginning of the game. Nice video tribute. Huge standing ovation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that lasted, I think, over two minutes. I was impressed. He said uh, in the post game, I was trying to get to the anthem, they wouldn't let me yeah. <laughs> because the crowd kept going. Yeah, they finally had to like put the flag up on the jumbotron. Yeah. They basically cut into yeah. people cheering exactly uh, to get it going, and you could see him kind of laughing and chuckling with his uh, yeah. with his teammates on the Dallas bench over there because he kept skating around and and it's like I can't get out there. They won't <laughs> let me. That's what you get for starting Pavelski, right? I mean, you got to yeah. start Pavelski. No, of course, of course. But, yeah. So that game, uh, again, this is a game where we talked a little bit about Aaron Dell already. Mm -hmm. This game, he didn't just play well. He played lights out, unconscious, insane. He was standing on his head. Uh, this is a game where I thought the defense didn't play so great, and he just bailed him out. This is a game that I think we both feel Aaron Dell stole. Uh, it, it was nuts. I mean, yeah. watching the amount, not even just the amount of saves, but the quality of the save. I mean, the first goal came off of a power play. Yeah. Or it was a penalty kill for the Sharks. But uh, they scored on a power play where Jamie, Jamie Benn, I think, tipped it in when, yeah. they, when they shot it. And it was the first 
two minutes of the game. Uh, Evander Kane took a bad penalty. He tried to, I don't know what you call it, a windmill move where he goes around the guy because the guy was trying to hit him and mm-hmm. he tried to reach the stick and he smacked yeah, him in the face yeah. with it. So uh, it's a terror. It's it sucks that it's a penalty, yeah. but it's a penalty. You got to be responsible sure. for your stick. So that put the shark shorthanded right away, and they scored right away. So I was like, oh great, here we go. Yeah. But uh, good on the sharks to come back, score two goals take the lead, mm-hmm. and then Aaron Dell just took the rest of the game from there. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, one of the things that Dell had said in the post game was, you know, we're starting to do the little things more consistently now. And I thought that was really interesting that he said that specifically because, again, Aaron Dell must be watching the show too, I guess. <laughs> if you go back, you can hear Aaron talking about what's killing them is the details, the little details of the game. Um, and I don't even want to kind of revisit that. Me saying that. Yeah, you Not saying Dell. Not Aaron Dell. Yeah. Right. I mean, you kind of look similar. Bald headed looking beard. Never mind. Uh, no, so, yeah, you, you go back and you listen to, you know, our Aaron basically talking about <laughs> the details killing the San Jose Sharks, you know, why they're losing these games by like a goal here and there or why they're making these little mistakes. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you kind of want to revisit that a little bit. I mean, sure. Uh, go for e- it. The easiest thing, if we go back to the Washington Capitals game, Sharks scored an empty number goal with one minute left to right. go in the game. Uh, 15 seconds into the next shift, uh, Goudreau has a chance to clear the puck. Mm-hmm. Doesn't, get, doesn't get out of the zone. You don't, open net, all you have to do is clear the zone. You don't right. have to shoot it. Don't ice it. Just clear it. I mean, even, I, I think, personally, my opinion, when you're up two goals, you shoot every time. Who cares if you ice that's at that fair. point, right? Sure. Just get it rid. I mean, that's going to take five, six seconds off each time you mm-hmm. do it, but at least you're guaranteed that it gets out of the zone. Um, Goudreau missed on it. They get the puck back in deep, get a goal. Here we go. Little details. You get that puck out. If he flips that puck out, that's pretty much the game. Yeah. They're done. Yeah. That's it. So that's the best example, the the closest or the, the most recent example that, right. that I can think of. Uh, but it's just those small little details that are costing you points in the standings. I mean, that's that's one point in the standings right there. Mm-hmm. Getting getting an overtime loss instead of a regulation win. So that's that's one example of many others this, this year, but Right. Um, they, they start putting those together and getting those little details down. They streak. They get a win streak going. Yeah. They get some, some wins strung together here. So Aaron Dell said this much in the post game. Is what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. So. And uh, not uh, you know again, it was Pav's return, but uh, this game had everything right. So you had the return of Pavelski. Uh, it was a, a Sharks win. Everybody seemed to be playing really well. But uh, the the one thing that I think that kind of overshadowed was that, uh, or maybe was overshadowed a little bit. They did they did talk about it, but Marlow. Yep. Played 1,700 games. That was the 1,700th game. It's crazy. What a crazy game, right? <laughs> I mean, Pavelski returns to the Sharks in the yeah. same same exact game that Marlowe plays his 1,700th game. And Pavelski just played his 1,000th game. There you go, like, yeah. Oh, last week, I think. Yeah, it yeah. yeah. It's just nuts. And yeah. then uh, the first player, well, first of all, Marlowe, the fifth player in NHL history to reach that plateau. Congratulations. Also, the first player to score a goal in his 1,700th game, which is yeah. kind of a... A baseball stat, but hey, whatever, yeah. we'll take it, right? So I, it's one of those stats that I don't know if we'll ever get broken in okay. our lifetime. Yeah, because how many players reach seventeen hundred games? Only five. There you go. How many of those are going to score in those? Yeah. Right. So no, that's true. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I know it's just, just just kind of a great game all around. There was, it was very emotional. Lots of like you know highlights and, and milestones and everything going on in that game. So if you're able to go to that game, uh, good on you. I'm sure it was really entertaining. And if you take a look right back here, you'll see the uh, jersey oh, yeah. that was uh, picked up during that game. So if you went and you picked one of these up as well, again, good on you. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's actually a really nice one. I do enjoy this one. I think I like the Shark Freak a little bit more, but I think I, I, think I do too. I think this one, uh, it looks better than we thought it was going to look. Yeah, I don't think we had an example of that yeah. when we did our show earlier. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, but yeah, you can see the Santa Cruz boardwalk in the background. So the shark's coming out of the boardwalk. It's kind of cool. Really it's cool really stuff. cool. Good colors. I mean, it's shark's colors, but yeah. it just looks really... It's different. Another different design. Uh, you know, yeah. different things for different people. So it's good. I love it. Yeah. So uh, I think we have... There's a clip on, on this game as well, is there not? We do. There's okay. a clip of uh, Hurdle talking about Aaron Dell after the game. Uh, he was asked about how Aaron Dell performed. He was asking about uh, a couple other things and then uh, follows up with Couture... Or, Couture missing the All Star game and Hurdle is going to be his replacement. Right. So Hurdle's asked about you know what an honor it is to go to the All Star game. So here's the clip. I think he was awesome. You know the save. You know the last three minutes he made. It was amazing. You know and and he's you know for us there. It's really comfortable you know feel because we know he making the save for us and you know last couple of games he was 
big reason we win you know the games so I'm really happy about it and but I think we like team we did pretty good job you know for sure he uh, make a couple of you say but I think we stay tight we play together you know it's it is kind of our game what we have to you know win 2-1 you know 3-2 you know we, we know we don't score many goals but if we play like that in D zone you know we know we can win the games against you know anybody you know, a lot of people when Logan goes down you know a lot of chatter around as well you know the Sharks are, are probably not going to make the playoffs now. Did you say anything you guys talk about? You rally around yeah. that at all? Yeah, we you know it's always because it wasn't a great start of the season, and if you miss one of the best player on the team, you know, so everybody like kind of turn our back and they, you know, season over. But I think this is this is the time and the team and everybody come close together, you know, play like just one person, you know, and we know we. The best player has to be extra better, you know, if you miss a pl player like that. But I think last two games was awesome for our team. Everybody did exactly what we were supposed to be do. We forecheck, back check, you know, we doing our details and and you know, big big back to back at the home, you know. But we have to just keep going because we got three important game, you know, before the All Star. So you know, we you know we know all three, you know. So we have to be ready for that because that will be a little better feeling, you know, and come after All Star. But we have to just play, play like that every game, and we should be fine. I would say today is a huge honor for me. I'm really happy about it. I'm just sad for you know Logan because I think he was skipped a couple of times, you know, before, you know, and he was always you know shining, especially in playoff, you know, and you don't get deserve, you know. So I'm a little bit sad for him, but I he will come back and he will. You know, get another for sure chance, but I'm looking forward to it, and I'm really excited about it. You know, it's it's one of the dreams you want to be one there too. So I'm re really really happy. Uh, good on Hurdle for his first All Star trip. Yeah. So uh, it's good it's good to see that he's being recognized for one. Um, I think it's well deserved. I don't think there's anyone really, maybe Evander Kane uh, for his play for his goal scoring this year, but I think Hurdle's been a better overall player, um, and and I'm glad to see him go, and and it's going to be fun. He's going to be a fun guy at the All Star game. Oh yeah, less penalties, more smiles. Right. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I think Hurdle's the right pick here. Right. I think Kaner's done a phenomenal job in terms of putting the puck in the net, but I have to agree with you. Um, definitely well deserved, uh, even though it was kind of like the, uh, the the second choice, if you will. So whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Get him in there. It'll Still be a good to time. the dance, right? The only thing I regret <laughs> for him, the only thing I regret for Hurdle is that he didn't make it to the All-Star game when Yarmor Yager was still playing. That would have been cool. Right? That's he would have liked it more. Yeah. Hurdle would have liked it more. Big I mean, time. Yeah. I think both of them would have. Well, yeah. Yeah, so. Sure. Anyway, is what it is. Is there anything else you want to talk about with the All-Star game? Though? Well, there's a new format coming, right? Well, they or got a new, a new event. Right, if you sorry. Will. That was one thing Not I, I wanted to bring up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Now, I want to bring this up. I, I just saw this on Twitter, actually. Um, they're going to have three-on-three -three, uh, women's hockey as part of the All-Star uh, weekend, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, top three Canadian, well, I mean not top three, but top some of the top three Canadian players against some of the top three uh, USA players. So it's U.S. first Canada yeah. women's three-on-three. -three. I think it's going right? to be great. I can't yeah. wait to see this. And this is one of those things, okay, you, you talk about the All-Star weekend and uh, some people, you know, they're not really drawn to it. For me, this is a draw. This is something that I'm interested in checking out. You know, I, I wish there was a, more of an opportunity. Maybe you guys can uh, tell me where I can see it, but I wish I could watch more of, you know, the, the women's games. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're, they're tenacious out there. Um, especially like the Olympic stuff is great, but I wouldn't mind just seeing just straight up league play. You know, so the only time I get to see him really is the Olympics. Yeah, I can't think of any other time. And and that's it's a shame because I'd, yeah. I'd love to watch their games. They're they're awesome out mm -hmm. there. So, uh, and I thought it was great when when I mean, leave it to San Jose to be progressive and kick this off. Right, they right. started this whole thing with with uh, Kendall Coyne and all of them being part mm -hmm. of the All Star Weekend. Uh, you know, back when we had it here, and then even at Fan Fest when we had yeah. them uh, come out and play the the women against the uh, Sharks alums. That. that I mean, that was awesome. You know, so I think a lot of people were drawn to that, and I think it's just a really good thing for the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this uh, with All Star Weekend uh, coming up. So just a cool thing. Um, if you're interested, definitely check it out. Yep. So anything else you wanted to touch on? With uh, just or? going back, not on the All-Star game, but okay. going back to the quote that Hurdle just talked about. They asked him if uh, with Couture out, does this mean your season's done? Do you guys talk about this? You know, how's it going to go? So um, going into the week ahead, I'll yeah. just segue into the week ahead. I think um, this week is a make or break for the Sharks. So I talked about, I think over a month ago, I was at, we were, we were all constantly asked, you know, what point do you <laughs> just give up on the season and blow up the team, get trade picks, you know, trade for picks and all that stuff. 
I said to me the All Star break is a better deal or a uh, uh, deadline kind of of when they should really assess the team and when they should go. Okay, we're going to be sellers and not buyers at this trade deadline coming up. Um, for me, you know, three games. It's six points on the board. You're playing Arizona, Colorado, and Vancouver. These are three teams that are at the top, two in our own division. Okay. You need these points. If you go six for six on points, uh, you're in it. If you lose these three games, you're done. I think they're done. Okay. And if you can't beat these three teams on the road, you don't deserve to be in the playoffs anyway. So not that they deserve to. They need to be there. You're there. You're not. But I don't think um, I would have no sympathy, and I'd say <laughs> gone. It's just okay. you, you get the all-star break, take a break. Say goodbye to your friends because people are gonna be leaving. So I I want to I want to get there is your... a freeze on trades during the All Star break. Yes. So nobody can get traded during the All Star break. So right. That's why I'm saying it's gonna come afterwards. I would like to get your opinion, and I'm kind of putting them on the spot right now because we didn't talk about this beforehand. Sure. Uh, but I would like to get your opinion on. You said if they win the six, or I'm sorry, if they win the three games, get the six points. Right. Or if they lose those three games, what's the split for you? Would it Two one record, a one and two record. No, what's the split for you? That's your your cutoff. More of if they get, let's say they get four of six points. Okay, this week, then it's just to hold, okay. wait and see, and wait longer, closer to the deadline. And I, I love that you said that, by the way, for a couple of reasons. One, when you looked back a few weeks and you get uh, analysis from guys like Kevin Kurz. Uh, and, and just other you know stat junkies essentially, and people are saying this is what the record needs to be for them to be able to make playoffs uh, to get to the 95 point mark. Um, essentially, what they were saying was we need to win two thirds of our games, right? You need to gather about two thirds of the remaining points. And it's funny when you look over the past I don't know week, two weeks or so. I think it's two weeks. We've essentially won about two thirds of our games. Mm -hmm. You just said four out of six points to two out of three games that's two-thirds of the games so you say holding i feel like that's where we need to be to make playoffs i think if we made half of those points we got an overtime loss and a win that's kind of the holding for me almost you know and i know we need to gather gather up as many points as we can so you don't want to go to overtime against these teams definitely do not in your division definitely so giving do not. them points i 100 percent agree with you on that one in terms of what the Sharks need to do in terms of gathering points and whatnot, I think four out of six is not just um, good. I think that's that's what we need. That's where we need to be. We need to continue to gather four out of six. Look, it'd be great to get 100% of the points from here on out. Is it realistic? Probably not. So from here on out, if we can continue to get you know that four out of six points, the you know the five out of eight or, or however many it was that that last week before I, I mean I think that's that's a good pace for the Sharks and I think if you look at the pace that they're on now yes if you look at the whole season it looks much worse right if you take the whole season into account if you look at the pace that they're on now I think even without Couture we're looking yeah. pretty good in terms of our ability to gather points so for Aaron he said all-star break now that basically leaves the three games right uh, for me, I had said, and again, we had said this, like I think it was months ago, mm -hmm. or a month or two ago maybe. Um, for me, I had said closer to the trade deadline. I think I said like maybe two or three weeks away from trade deadline. So he's doubling down on that. I'm going to double down on what I said. So I'm going to give them, what would we say, it was another like three weeks or so? It's about three weeks from now. Okay. So for, for, for me. Yours, yeah. Okay. So Aaron's basically a week. Mine is another three, four weeks or so. Okay. So that's that's kind of where we think in terms of uh, what this team is is going to be. I mean, the good thing the Sharks have going for them is this All Star break because yeah. they are an older team. I think they are one of, if not the oldest, average age. Probably because they got added, two forty year olds. Yeah, they added Marlowe. Yeah, like before the season. You know, yeah. before the season they weren't as old. So um, I think that helps them recover. Everybody, mm -hmm. the whole team. I mean, the whole league is recovering, but I think it especially helps older teams sure. that are on the road, especially Pacific coast teams that travel the most yeah. as yeah. well so um i would expect the sharks to come out refreshed and looking better uh you know some of those banged up players are, mm -hmm. are healthy now so um that they have that going for them i guess after yeah. the all-star yeah. break but anyway should we 
We'll actually jump go into the week ahead. Right into the week ahead now. Yeah. So the first game, again, it's another Tuesday game. Again, this one being Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, like right. we typically see. So uh, Tuesday, we are playing in Arizona. There so you go. Three, these three games are going to be on the road. So yep. in Arizona. Arizona, I mean, as of this taping, <laughs> <laughs> actually, they're not leading right now. I think Calgary's ahead. Okay. I think Calgary's, they just keep leapfrogging each other. Right. Calgary, Vegas, and uh, Arizona are kind of all up in the mix. Now, Arizona has Taylor Hall on their team now. Um, Phil Kessel's playing a little bit better, probably because Taylor Hall's there, mm -hmm. would be my guess. You know, that, that just brings them up another lot, sure. notch. Arizona now has a bona fide superstar player on their team. Phil Kessel was kind of on the... He's kind of on the downtime, sure. downside of his career, so um, not quite the superstar he used to be about a decade ago, but Taylor Hall for sure is up there. So that kind of makes Arizona a more legit team. Oh, yeah. Um, they are fantastic. They are a very stingy defensive team. They don't give up much. So they're kind of the team that the Sharks need to score on them earlier. They need to be the first ones to score because then that opens up the game. Arizona's going to take more chances so they can tie it or you know to try and take the lead. So that'll open up more opportunities for the Sharks to counter get more chances. Mm -hmm. It'll be a better viewable game because it's just kind of boring. Okay. <laughs> it's boring hockey to me. Sorry. <laughs> boring hockey. So I would, for me, I expect to win. Okay. All, all these games, I'm going to expect to win. <laughs> they need to win. Aaron always expects wins. <laughs> they need to win. Yeah. My question would be more of, I bet Martin Jones gets a game in one of these three. Oh, yeah. Which three is it? That's a, a very good question. Now, the thing with Arizona, again, it is a divisional opponent. So if you lose that game, you're not just losing two points. You're allowing somebody in your division to gain more points ahead of you. I think Aaron had brought up earlier that the Arizona Coyotes have uh, 55 points, and we have 46, 7? 40, that was 42. 42? Yeah. Okay, we're we're quite a ways behind. Down there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So um, yeah, so uh, this is where you know you really do want to get uh, some of those points back from the divisional opponents. Now, I don't think that we're necessarily uh, going to be catching uh, any of these teams in terms of the point values. But again, divisional opponents, you always want to get as many points as you can against divisional opponents because you just never know if any of them go on a losing streak. Um, you could catch up to them pretty easily. So um, that's something to consider. Uh, moving on from the Arizona game, unless you had anything else that you wanted to bring up about that. Sorry, they had 46 points, not 42. They had 46. I'm probably going to get corrected, and it's already in the comments. So whatever. Uh, okay, good. Anyway. So we're closer than we think. So yeah, this is a team you definitely want to take those yeah. those points from. So knowing that I was correct the first time around, yes, you could catch them in the standings. <laughs> uh, so yeah, definitely uh, a, a team that you uh, you you got to get those points against. You got to beat them. Yeah. If you can't beat any of these three teams, like I said, you don't deserve to be in the playoffs. So then going from Arizona to Colorado, Colorado. on Thursday. Colorado is a dangerous team. Oh man. yeah, they are. They're good. They're young. They're good. Um, they're fun and exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to see them last year in the playoffs. We went to seven games against them. So a little bit different look now than they were a year ago. They're a lot more in uh, more depth to their lineup than yeah, they, they got did some, last year. They got some guy named Donskoy on there. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Nazem Kadri. Oh, yeah. So I wonder if he's going to, you know, him and Thornton always had something. That's the one with the beard, right? Yeah. The he got the beard <laughs> ripped off from yeah, him. So. Yeah, yeah. And they made a bobblehead after it. Maybe we'll get another one. Yeah. We'll see. I will say there was a there was a, a hit of questionable nature, I believe, on Colorado, and it might have been to Donsko. I don't remember who the player was but recently. Yeah, yeah, he he Donsko got and Kadri yeah. popped off. He yeah. grabbed this dude and just lit him up. And I have to say, I'm not the hugest Nazem Kadri fan or anything like that, but my hats off to a guy who you know defends his teammates and goes after the guy that you know throws a big hit like that. I have yep. no problem with that. And so. I said this rec or recently. I said this earlier this season. The Sharks do not have anyone doing that. I feel like there's big okay. hits that get thrown around. Their guys are getting hit, and getting knocked around, and nobody steps up to do exactly what he did. Okay. And I I want to see more of that. I want to see more camaraderie. More you know we're in this fight together. Mm -hmm. um, it brings the team together more. Okay, so Colorado, a dangerous team. Um, moving on from that, we talk about the game on Saturday against Vancouver. In Vancouver. In Vancouver, I feel like the Sharks, this should be a slam dunk win. I feel like really? the Sharks have a Vancouver's number. They okay. just seem to always be beating them the last decade, practically. Ever since uh, we beat them in the playoffs, and man, I can't remember when that was. Early 2010s. Okay. 2012, 2013, somewhere around there. Um they uh, the Sharks have just always seemed to go in there and beat them. Uh, Vancouver is kind of a one line team. 
they uh i mean they they're a little bit more in depth than that but okay. um they're top line i feel like the sharks can handle it uh, without couture though it's a little bit different right so <laughs> we'll see um he was i think couture was the best two-way forward the sharks had along with the best scoring forward so mm. it's kind of sad that one guy is that good uh the sharks need to step up so we'll see how they do uh but i feel like the sharks always tend to go in there and play well yep and uh, we had already talked about it earlier, even just in this episode, but guys like Kevin LeBanc, guys like Timo Meyer, uh, Jumbo, of course, Bernsey, um, all these guys need to step their, their game up. Uh, again, with C- Captain Couture being out and these games being, uh, two of them being divisional and even it just being in the Western Conference, you know, you're still trying to climb into a wild card spot. You want to get as many points as you can, mm-hmm. specifically against the West or just points in general. But when it's against teams in the West, uh, they, they mean more. So um, we're really looking for big games out of those guys. Now, I did want to touch on Timo Meyer real fast because it happened in the live. Uh, it was a guy named Kyle, was it? I think so. Okay, a guy named Kyle <laughs> who uh, we confused for Timo Meyer's mom uh, <laughs> because in the comments he's uh, you know he's constantly saying, hey, Timo this and Timo that. How come no one's talking about Timo? So uh, let's just talk just a little bit, just a bit about Timo and what his sure. why, why we hadn't really brought it up necessarily. Um, and, and why he was so upset that we hadn't we hadn't addressed it. Addressed you, what? Timo? Yeah. What? But well, his his stats. He's saying, he's, oh, he's he's playing really well. These stats. He's not. You know, it's only he puts Timo up yeah. here when Timo's down here. Okay. I'm not. I'm not saying we're not saying Timo's a bad player. It's more of we see his potential. Yes. We see the need. The Sharks need for him to step up, and he hasn't been. His effort level hasn't been. Consistent. Okay. The consistent is the is the main word. He needs to be consistent. To be that next step, to be that all-star player, you need consistency. You need to be one of the top guys in the game every night, and he has not been that. There's times where he had three goals and assists, mm-hmm. what, a week ago? Yeah. Two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. So we've seen his potential to take over a game and dominate. Um, we need more of that. I mean, not dominate an entire game, every game on out, but he needs to be in the top three players every night. Yeah, so and, and it's not even necessarily the stats, right? Like like he was just talking about. It's not necessarily oh he needs to score a goal, but he needs to be he needs to show up, mm-hmm. right? And there are a lot of times that we feel like the effort level from Timo Meyer isn't there. Look, we're talking about a guy like Kevin LeBanc needing to step up. Kevin LeBanc was a sixth round pick. Timo Meyer was a first round pick. This guy's ceiling should be much higher than a Kevin LeBanc. And he's, he's the type of guy that gets in those dirty areas. I remember the goal against uh, Marc-Andre Fleury when mm-hmm. he basically literally crashed the net. The net came off the moorings, right? And that's the type of things that we need out of Timo. Uh, and he got tripped up by Fleury. Yeah, and he got, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's the type of thing that we need out of Timo. We need that effort yeah. every night, and sometimes you just don't see it. That night he had three goals and assists. Yeah. He was hitting everything. Before yeah. he had scored any goals or done anything, um, he was hitting everyone and everything. That's the kind of I feel like once he gets that game established, yeah, he it brings it out of him, kind of so, like Angry Joe. When yeah, Joe gets angry. It's right. great. So Kyle, uh, and we know you're watching. And we know you like the show. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we 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 like Timo. Okay, <laughs> we just know that he could be more than what he is. We know that he can be a, a star player, and especially in on a team that is struggling right now, and especially with the captain as the best forward on the team and the leadership that's there uh, now out for six weeks. Mm-hmm. This is the prime opportunity for him to really step his game up, really show what he's capable of. You can play good all you want, but this guy can be great, and we want to see him be great. So uh, that's why we're asking Timo to step up. His stats do speak for themselves in the last little stretch. He's played well. We know he could play much better than that. So we're asking him to uh, step that game up, and we think that it's definitely in the realm of possibility for him. He's a very talented guy. Uh, we just need to see more of it. I so. feel like he's he's on the same trajectory as Hurdle. Yeah. At the same age, right? Absolutely. And, and Hurdle took that big step. I yeah. think once he was healthy, he was able to get up there. Right. Hurdle hasn't, luckily, has, or I mean, uh, Meyer hasn't been hit by the injury bug. So, yeah. Um, that's why he should be getting up there by now. Right. Whereas Hurdle took time because of the injury, Meyer's taking more time because it seems to be of the effort level. Yeah. So I think that's a fair assessment. You may disagree. Um, I still think there might be a possibility, Kyle, that you're, you're secretly his mom. <laughs> I'm, I got my eyes on you, buddy. I'm right here with you. Okay. Um, okay. So I think we're done with the week ahead, right? We are. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Is there anything else? Oh, um, the what do you call it? EA, not EA. Uh, so fantasy hockey. That. Fantasy, thank you. Real quick, fantasy hockey. Uh, here's League One. I'm in now fourth place, I believe. Yay. And, uh, you know, I need to make some moves. <laughs> Trade deadline's coming up. I got to do it. 
Uh, and then here's league number two, still in first. There you go. I like this team. I've always liked this team better. Okay. And this team I have three injured guys now. Crosby, who still hasn't come back. Jeez. Klingberg, who's now on IR. Okay. And Mantha? Mantha's still out. There you go. Yep. It's killing me. Okay. So I think that does it for uh, this episode 75. 75. It's crazy. Dude, three quarters of the way to 100. My goodness. That's nuts. No. Is that, what do they call it? The quarter quell? I don't know. Quarter quell. Isn't that the Hunger Games, the 75th? <laughs> wow. There you go. Nice. Oh, thank you. You got the whistle in the background. We'll boost that audio oh, for you guys. Jay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been a long road, and uh, we're going to keep going, obviously. But uh, just uh, for me, it's, it was kind of a milestone, right? I mean, Marlowe's seventeen hundred, sure, whatever. Seventy five episodes for the Fin Factor. I'm really uh, I'm really proud of it. You and, want a uh, cake or something? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Maybe we can get Randy to come back with some more cupcakes. Sure, that'd be dope. Uh, Those were so good. Next week, though, our schedule is yeah. going to be a little different. That is true. We're going to be off next week, but right. we will have a little something coming out uh, sometime Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, just a short little brief thing about a couple things about the Sharks. I'm calling it a featurette. A featurette. That's nice. That's cute. It is cute. So cute. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I guess that that's it. That's it. Very good. For Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys uh, in two weeks. Two weeks, why not? Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.